What is up, everybody? Mr. Slipcover Bullet Blake here with my first ever blue review. Um, this is... I keep saying that I'm going to do reviews here and there in my other videos, and I have yet to do one. So I'm going to remedy that right now, right here, with a review of 1987's Tough Guys Don't Dance. Written and directed by Norman Mailer, this one stars Ryan O'Neill, Isabella Rossellini, and none other than the legendary, iconic, ever impressive Wings Hauser. Uh, sorry, I'm a big fan. Uh, this. Where do I begin with this movie? Like, it's. It's not a very straightforward story. Like, it, it's. It sounds simple. I mean, not really. Look, Tim found blood in his car, a woman's head in the drug stash, and the chief of police with the love of his life. And that's only the beginning. Was it the ex-wife, the bisexual prep school pal, or Tim himself? I I really enjoy this slipcover, actually. The whole trade paperback thing, I mentioned it briefly in my unboxing video, but I I think it's fucking great. Uh, they, they got this cool little shit on here where the critics are ra it looks just like a book. Where the critics are raving. It's bold, innovative, wonderful, stinks. Giant death orgy with lots of maniacs. One of the worst ever. My grandmother could do better. Excellent. Crazy entertainment. Very funny. Gross. Sleazy. Garbage. Quick turns of plot. Enjoyed having to think. And whoever wrote this has never read a good book. Mind you, Norman Mailer is the writer of the book the writer of the screenplay, and the director of this movie. But this was part of the marketing campaign. I'll, if you've watched the trailer, they, you'll, you'll get the reference to that. But, back to the blue. I mean, the picture's gorgeous, so you, you're not going to have any qualms about that or anything. They did do a 2K scan from the 35mm inner positive. So, automatically, the film looks great. It looks, it looks really good. Uh, the movie, I mean, for me personally, I'm just going to say it. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fucking great. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of, like, twists and turns and, like, what the fuck did that just happen? Or who the fuck is that? Or how? Or why? Or what? Or fucking... I, whatever you know like the movies the movies like a dumpster fire of a film but it's like the kind of dumpster fire you want to dump more gasoline on and just revel in the blazes like mm, I, I really fucking liked it in fact I liked it so much that I've watched it twice I actually watched it back, I mean, not back to back, but I've watched it twice because, like, the characters are interesting, they, or at least they were to me. I, I thought it was, like, a little discombobulated of a plot, but I got, like, attached to these characters. And the first person perspective of telling the story that switches from person to person. I don't know how how smart of a plan that was, but it's art and it's Mailer's vision and I, he took it from his pages and put it to film, so you can't really like fault him for wanting to do it his way. The I don't want to spoil too much. I don't know how... I, I don't even know if I understood the movie enough to spoil it. 
but I understood it enough to enjoy it, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, like, Ryan O'Neal is great in it. I mean, it says Isabella Rossellini, but she's, like, not... I mean, she's in it. She's, like, a, a, a main role, but she's, like, barely in it. Uh, Lawrence Tierney is in it, and, I mean, the whole time I'm watching the movie, I just want to hear him... Let Let's go to work. You know, like... I always associate him with Reservoir Dogs, but it was cool seeing him as like this father to Ryan O'Neill's character as he's like narrating this whole fucked up situation he's in. Um, a love story haunted by murder, the tagline. It, I mean, it really is. It's kind of a love story, kind of like a thriller. A drama, a murder mystery, I mean, there's a lot of weird shit in this movie. That said, I thought it was a good movie. I would give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, I rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, 5 being neither good nor bad. The more I enjoy it, the higher the rating will go, and like vice versa, below 5 and to 1, it's, it's shit. I give this one an 8.5 because I know I'll watch it again and again. I'll, I mean, I've already watched it twice. So, as far as Vinegar Syndrome releases goes, this one's a good one. And I don't really have much else to say about it. Uh, like I said, the quality of the Blu-ray is great, as, as it usually is from Vinegar Syndrome. And the story, although it might take you a bit, or several viewings, to really comprehend this movie, with its... I don't know. It's... It, like, I... I've watched it twice and I still can't really describe this movie. That said, I still give it an 8.5, which I wasn't thinking that I was originally because after watching, like I, I hadn't watched it yet, and I watched Master Chaos's review on this movie, and he didn't like it. And him and I are usually like in the same boat when it comes to movies, or at least I found that we are late. So like. When I watch his reviews, I, I give him a lot of credibility. And, and this one I know is like an odd duck and a fluke occurrence where I just, I thought it was really good. So, I gotta disagree with him there. Check it out. You should really watch this movie. Uh, as far as special features go, the highlight of this one is the interview with Wingshauser. And I was almost more excited to watch that than I was to watch the movie because he's just batshit crazy nuts. Even though in this interview, he really wasn't. He was so down to earth, it was almost like watching a different person. Because in his movies, he's so fucking off the wall and out there that you just expect him to always be insane. And I get that this was like 30 plus years ago. But that was really cool. Uh, it also has a My Dad in Motion, which is an interview with Norman Mailer's son, which I didn't watch, actually. Uh, a Crazy Spooky Movie, which is an interview with Michael Lennon, who's Norman Mailer's archi archivist. Ar archivist? Archivist? Why am I saying that word? Fucking weird. But he's his biographer, basically. And that one's interesting, too, if you have a lot invested in the writer and director, which I don't because I'm not really a reader and he's like an author first. So, yeah, the special features, and that's that's pretty much it. It's got the reverse cover art and the theatrical trailer on there too. And you should watch the theatrical trailer because I got a kick out of that. As I said, with the slip cover the, that plays directly from the theatrical trailer. Um, yeah. So, I would recommend this movie. It might not be for everyone, and you might hate it. 
I'm sure more people will hate it than love it, but I just thoroughly enjoyed it. So, I mean, check it out. Uh, if, if you liked it, let me know in the comments below, or if you hated it, go ahead and discuss. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. I will be doing more reviews. I'll actually be reviewing all of Vinegar Syndrome's releases in the next coming days or whatever, weeks, whatever. However long it takes me to get through them. And check, check them out. Participate. I love to talk about movies. So if you want to talk about movies, this movie, go ahead. Uh, and so until next time, have a good day.